How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're talking about some really creepy vampire stories. From witnessed accounts of actual vampire attacks to whole towns plagued by the undead. Join us as we take a look at five real vampires that actually existed. And before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button for more creepy content just like this. In 1912, the US state of Louisiana was gripped by fear after a bizarre spate of murders. The victims were all found dismembered in their own home, but there was little to no blood present at the scene. After police efforts to catch the murderer proved futile, rumours began circulating that the culprit may actually be a vampire. After several more bodies were discovered, the locals pleaded with Father Henry Jante, a local Catholic priest, for help. Jante met with a local voodoo priest by the name of Moses Amishan, and together they decided to hunt the vampire. The two holy men set about mapping the crimes. They discovered that the murders seemed to follow the train line, leading them to believe that the person they were looking for might be employed by the railway. They began to monitor one particular station where they spotted a man neither had ever seen before. He was ghostly pale and appeared to have blood smeared on his clothing. Here's where the reports get even stranger. In an effort to learn the man's identity, it was said that the priests hunted down and destroyed several minions who confirmed that the man, August Delagrange, was indeed the head vampire they were looking for. The next night, the two men made their way to an isolated shack deep in the middle of the bayou. Delagrange was sleeping inside, presumed weak from lack of feeding. Jonte took a wooden stake and drove it straight into the heart of the beast. Jonte claims that Delagrange didn't make a sound, only opened his eyes wide and stared into the face of the priest before fading into hell. August Delagrange was believed to have murdered more than 40 people before he was staked by the priest. Today, his skeleton can be seen on display at the Vampire Museum located on the outskirts of the French Quarter in New Orleans. This photo here is of a small wooden box said to contain the vampire's heart along with the wooden stake that killed him. In 1726, a man named Arnold Pale was reported to have become a vampire in the small Serbian town of Medwenja. According to reports compiled by several Austrian military doctors who were sent to investigate the case, Pale was said to have become a vampire after falling to his death from a hay wagon. The villagers said that Pale often claimed that he had been plagued by a vampire in his former homeland but that he believed he had cured himself by eating soil from the vampire's grave and smearing himself with its blood. Shortly after Pale's death, members of the village began claiming to have been attacked by him. In each case, the witnesses mysteriously died just days later. When the local military heard of what was happening, they advised the villagers to open the suspected vampire's grave and examine the corpse. Despite being dead for 40 days, Pale's body was still intact and his veins contained fluid blood. His hair and beard had continued to grow and there was fresh blood in his mouth and on his shirt. The villagers concluded that Pale was indeed a vampire and drove a stake deep into his heart. As they did so, he's said to have let out a frightful shriek, groaning and bleeding. The villagers burned the body and then staked and burned the bodies of his four victims as well. About five years later, another spate of mysterious deaths began to plague the area. The locals believed that the first to die, a woman named Melitza, was to blame as she had once mentioned that she had eaten two sheep that had been killed by vampires. It was thought that those sheep were killed by the original vampire, Arnold Pale. Locals began reporting that the deceased were attacking them in the middle of the night. One girl by the name of Stanoska claimed she had been strangled in her sleep by a boy that had died nine weeks prior. She passed away just three days later. Households gathered together in the evenings, some members standing watch while others slept. The locals complained to the military who sent an infectious disease specialist named Glaser to investigate. He found that many of the diseased showed no signs of decomposition and some even had fresh blood in their mouths. He compiled a report recommending that the authorities should pacify the population by fulfilling its request to execute the vampires. Shortly after, a second commission consisting of three military surgeons, one of whom was Dr. Johann Flukinger, as well as several other military officers who were sent to investigate. 
They too found that several of the older bodies had not decayed and their chests and other organs were filled with fresh blood. The surgeons summarised their findings by stating that the bodies were indeed in vampiric condition. The suspected vampires had their heads cut off and their bodies burned. The others were reburied in their graves. The amazing thing about this case is that it's been reported on by so many experts. The disease specialist Glasser even sent the details of his findings to his father, also a doctor and a correspondent of a prominent Nuremberg journal. He wrote a letter to the journal detailing the case and the reports of both Glasser and Flukinger were reprinted in several articles. Could this small Serbian town have actually been plagued by vampires? Or did all these experts somehow get their reports wrong? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. In 1954, it was reported that a mysterious seven foot tall vampire with iron teeth was terrorising the residents in the Gorbals district of Glasgow, Scotland. After the vampire was said to have killed two young boys in the area, hundreds of school children descended on the local cemetery. Armed with knives and wooden stakes, the children searched the graveyard for the vampire. Even the police were powerless to stop the children who only left the cemetery after it began to rain heavily. They continued their search for the elusive vampire for the next two nights. The story made headlines all around the world. Soon the whole country was in the grip of a full-blown vampire panic. Local parliamentarians believed that the source of the bizarre rumours could be traced back to a popular American comic book of the time. As a result, they championed the 1955 Children and Young Persons Harmful Publications Act, which was eventually passed. The act, which still stands today, prohibits comics that are believed to be harmful to children. While it was never clear whether or not the children ever found the vampire, several of those who descended on the cemetery in 1954 can still recall the bizarre tale. One vampire hunter, Ronnie Sanderson, said, I was there, I was in the graveyard when I was eight years old. I've been telling my wife about the vampire for years and she's never believed me. First published in 1746, the treatise on the apparitions of spirits and on vampires or revenants of Hungary was an extensive investigation into the paranormal written by Benedictine monk Anton Augustin Kelmet. The book covered all manner of the supernatural from angels, demons and ghosts to witchcraft and sorcery. The work analysed accounts of the various topics from mythology and folklore as well as the Bible and historically documented accounts. It was divided into three tomes, the second of which contained 63 chapters all dedicated to vampires and the undead. One documented account was that of a soldier who, in 1730, was lodging at a peasant's house in Hungary. The soldier claimed that he was sitting with a homeowner and his family for dinner when a man that he didn't know entered the house and sat down. The soldier noticed that the homeowner appeared to be fearful of the unknown dinner guest. The next morning, the homeowner was discovered dead. The family told the soldier that the strange man that sat at the table the night before was actually the father of the homeowner who had been dead for more than 10 years. The soldier informed his regiment and the army began to investigate. The captain of the infantry, along with several officers and a surgeon, interviewed members of the man's family, along with other residents of the village. The accounts matched those of the soldier and the father's corpse was exhumed. They found that the father, although dead for more than 10 years, still had the blood flow of a living man. The captain ordered his head to be cut off and his remains reburied in the tomb. Sometime later, the same captain received information that another man who had been dead for more than 30 years returned to his family's home on three separate occasions. Each time, he was said to have sucked the blood of one of the members of the house. Firstly, his brother, then son, and finally a servant. All three men were reported to have died immediately after being attacked. Once again, the man was suspected of being a vampire and his corpse was exhumed. Just like the previous case, the man's body was found to have a living blood flow, despite the fact that he had been dead for more than 30 years. The captain ordered a large nail to be driven through the man's temple and his corpse placed back into the grave. Before we get to the number one spot and learn about a famous vampire case that was reported in the media just a few decades ago, remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you'll be up to date with all our latest content. 
This photo, taken sometime between the late 1960s and early 70s, was captured in the Highgate Cemetery, London. The dark robed figure in the centre of the image is believed by many to be a king vampire of the undead, said to have been a Romanian nobleman brought to London by his devoted followers. In 1970, sightings of the vampire grew. On Friday the 13th of March, two men, Sean Manchester and David Ferrant, vowed to find and destroy the evil creature. The media reported the story and within two hours a mob of hunters from all over London began swarming over the lock gates of the cemetery to confront the beast. Manchester claimed he led a group to one particular catacomb where they managed to climb inside through a hole in the roof. He said they opened several coffins and placed garlic and holy water inside. Some months later, the charred and headless corpse of a woman was found near the catacomb that Manchester said he had entered. Ferrant was arrested soon after in the churchyard next to Highgate Cemetery, carrying a crucifix and a wooden stake. Shortly after Ferrant was arrested, Manchester and his group returned to the cemetery. This time they forced open the doors to another family vault where they believed the coffin of the vampire had been moved to. Just as Manchester was about to stake the body inside, he was persuaded to leave the vault by several members of the group. Three years later, Manchester claimed he again encountered the same corpse. This time it was in the cellar of an abandoned house in the Highgate area. Believing it had to be the vampire he was searching for, he staked and burned the body. While mysterious sightings are still reported at the Highgate Cemetery to this day, no one knows for sure if the King Vampire of the Undead still lurks within the grounds. Was this cemetery actually home to a real vampire? Was the beast destroyed, or could it still lie waiting in a sinister slumber, soon to awake and take its next victim? Well, that's the end of another episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying our content, hit that upward facing thumb. Now in the comments section below, let us know what you thought of these vampire stories. What do you think, real or fake? Well, that's it from me. I'll see you all next time. <gasps>